It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Good morning. We are here live at the BYP Chess Stop. Chess Channel. Oh, I got to adjust my. How's everyone this morning? Let me adjust my camera here so that I can cut off the top of my head. You don't want to see me anyway. You want to see the board. Good morning. Hey, it looks like we got a group. Belaglav geese up. Good to see you. Oh, Borland. Old what's his face? That's, you know, that could be my title. <laughs> Jeremy Hoare. Good morning. Eddie Guerrero. Good morning. Frank J. Mendelson. Hello, everybody. Good morning. Hey, Sunday morning seemed to be a good morning for uh, for doing this. Um, yesterday morning, we had a really, really fun session. I went two hours showing various traps in the Joko Piano. And I'm going to continue that theme, but we're going to switch to a, another opening. Um, I want to say welcome to all of the new subscribers. Uh, lots of people are starting to join in. That This is really quite fun. Uh, several ladies who are more than welcome have been joining and watching the chess videos and hopefully seeing the live streams. Hopefully I'm doing it the right time of days. This weekend, I have a three-day weekend, so I, I didn't get to do my live late last night. I had a busy day yesterday. It's all good. So I'm going to do this live this morning, and I'm going to do another live tomorrow morning, for those of you who can jump on. Tonight's live, now there's been several people asking me in the comments, both from my um, chess audience, as well as my Mormonism and philosophy and, you know, spiritual audience, they've been asking me about all of these books I have behind me all the time. I want to see your library and what kind of stuff you read. I'm going to present my library to you tonight. So you don't want to miss that if you can get it. Now, I start live tonight at six o'clock. It's going to be a little awkward because I'm using the camera on the uh, computer, of course, because I'm going to be doing live. So I'm going to be toting, you know, I'm going to be doing this number. I'm going to be toting the computer around and whoa, you know. So I'll try to make it so that it's not too disorienting to make you dizzy. But what I'll do is I'll go to each section of my library and I'll show you some of the books that have influenced my life and my way of thinking and which ones I've read all the way through and which ones I haven't, but I use as references. And my library is literally half of what it used to be. I just ran out of room. So I also found various texts um, like this one. This is a poor volume text. Analytical key to the Old Testament analyzes every single word in the Old Testament verse by verse in its Hebrew context, as well as the etymology, etc. It's a four volume work by, uh, oh, what's his face? John Joseph Owens. I used a hundred books to trade for this set of books. I'm, I'm serious, it was worth it. But back then, I was real. Hot shot with Hebrew. I really doing the Hebrew. So I'll show you stuff like that if you're interested. But for right now, let's do the chess. Uh, I've got philosophy, chess. I'll show you my chess library, my science library, my atheism library, my spirituality library, my literature library, the Greek literature, the the Old Testament literature, the archaeology, the historical Jesus stuff. I'll go through all that tonight. So anyway, anyway, we're here for chess. I'm just letting you know there's been a lot of you folks who have asked me about my library, and I'm going to be happy to share it with you. Hey, Eddie. Oh, wow. Hey, Ken Brown. Andrick Tepke. hope I don't mispronounce your name. Yes, we are going to have fun educating. Did you read them all? I've read every last page in my library. And understand what that means. I mean, I've read every last page of every book. <laughs> no, I have not read them all because so many of them I've used as references. But I will share some of why I haven't read some and why I've read others, etc. So, yeah, it, it'll be a lot of fun. I'm serious. It'll be really cool. 
No, I am not, Lee. <clears throat> Thank you for asking. No, I'm not Jehovah Witness. I was born and raised Mormon. I became a Mormon apologist, and then I lost faith in that. And so now I'm just kind of a, a what, an agnostic seeker. I don't know, but I'm looking. I'm, I believe there, there is more to this than just this life. And I went atheist for a while, and I'll show you my atheist library. And now I'm back on to the idea that I'm looking and I'm open for whatever is real. So anyway, okay, so let's get on with this. Got some great chess games for you. So we've all heard of the Evans Gambit. And last night um, after dinner, I went over to uh, one of my very favorite YouTubers. I will highly recommend this guy. He is just national master Nelson Lopez. And I watched his three series on the Evans Gambit. Spectacular stuff. And there's some material in this book. I'm getting this... Uh, Winning Chess Traps, Irving Turnip. Yes, it's a little bit older. It really is 1960s or 70s book, but it's all good because chess hasn't changed much except for the speeding up of the rapid chess and blitz chess and bullet chess and stuff. But the traps all remain the same. Yeah. So let's take a look at the Evans Gambit. See what goodies await us in the Evans Gambit. Knight, Queen, Bishop, three. Again, it's the Gioco Piano. We know this by now, right? From yesterday. It's the Gioco Piano. You always can tell the Gioco because the white response to Bishop C, uh, development, Bishop C4, and the black response, Bishop to C5. So they're both hitting the weakest pawn in the opening. Black's not going to be intimidated by white saying, ha ha, you better keep an eye on this because black comes out and says, yes, you too, right? So the Evans gambit begins when white says, I'm going to hit your bishop. Now the gambit, the idea of a gambit, right? You're giving him, essentially, you're just giving up a pawn. You say, oh, you want a pawn? Here, have some lunch. And he's not forced to take it, but in Evans Gambit. And Fisher played the Evans Gambit a little bit. I think all of the great grandmasters have played it a little bit. This was a very, very popular opening in Paul Morphy's day. Late 1800s, all the way through pretty much the 1900s, we see the Evans Gambit played. And it's played online a lot. So it is uh, an older gambit but it's not so much in tournament play just so you know uh it's a fun line to play if you enjoy playing fun chess this is the fun stuff for real so this is the idea of the evans gambit you're going to sacrifice the pawn so that you can get a very powerful speedy development in the center as white that's what that's what you're aiming for with this pawn push by taking the pawn, that is called the Evans Gambit, accepted. Ta-da, see, you learned something, right? <laughs> oh. And so you're going to immediately hit the bishop again. Here is where the trickiness of the Evans Gambit shows up. Pawn bishop three, the ideal, the ideal is to bop the bishop back to here, right? But there are options. You can, as black, come back to the c5, which is what this particular one does. Now, when your opponent does come back to this, you've bumped the c3 with the full intention of bumping to d4, where you hit the bishop again and the pawn. That is not to be ignored. But before you do, before you get into the battle for the center, you'll want a castle. That is really important to castle in gambit play. It's important to castle anyway, right? But we all know that. But yes, do castle. And when he castles, and now 
as a the reason it is so important in the Gioco Piano to hit the center is as black, you have to develop this night. It's really not much of an option. In the Evans Gambit, however, this can be a liability. And it, I mean, this is what makes Gambit so fascinating, right? <laughs> you go, you know, in an opening that is very similar to the Evans Gambit, that's perfectly fine. One little dumb pawn push, and, and then after you threaten the bishop, he bumps back, and now the move is not fine? That's correct. <clears throat> this is what keeps us coming back to chess. So let's see what happens. And the note here says, instinctive but weak. The best move, according to the commentary, is to solidify your center with queen three or with algebraic notation d6. That would, if you're playing this Evans Gambit as this, and you do put your bishop back here, and he does castle, strengthen your center it, as black, right? But this gentleman didn't. He went to here. And so now you do hit the center without question. The, the opening process with white you can, and this is why it's called the Gioco Piano. But now, now we played the Evans Gambit. Now, in the Gioco Piano, if you don't want to immediately, this leads to a very uh, energetic play. I mean, this is, oh, wow. Zing, bang, pow, biff, bop, you know, the old Batman uh, series where the boom, Robin would hit somebody and then they go biff. And, that's what this is. This is an all-out street brawl. But if you wanted to play the quiet aspect where you just basically play chess, where you, you bump it to here, supporting this pawn. Because black is going to, without question, and you need to recognize this in the Gioco, Black's knight is going to take that pawn. Now, don't worry. You can get it back later. It's good. But, but it's a central pawn, BYP. Yes, it is. True. But don't sweat the small stuff. This is part of the main line, yes? But in the Evans Gambit, don't go the Gioco Piano. No, you want to do the Forte. You want to do hit him on the chin. And so you go full out. D4, that's where you're going. So go there. Don't hesitate. Do not pass go. Do not collect 200 for you Monopoly players. And, of course, the pawn will change the pawn. The pawn is gone. And the pawn will change the pawn. See, it's similar to the Joko, to the Italian. But there is a big difference here. Bishop, knight, three. You do we we saw yesterday, and I'll just emphasize this for those of you who didn't see yesterday's live stream, uh, watch that live stream because it automatically records them. I believe it's episode uh, either ten or eleven. It's on the the traps of the Italian game. You can come back to here. That is an option, but it's not as good. Too passive, too weak. And for heaven's sakes, don't ever put your bishop back on its home square. You want to castle. Just don't go that far back. That's just a waste of your time. So he goes here. So anyway, I'm not going to lecture you on that yet. <laughs> so here again, we see this main theme. Even in the Evans Gambit, especially with the Evans Gambit, the theme here is strong center. Now, by definition, as such, you can have a strong center if you have a pawn that can be supported by the pieces behind it, and that pawn is not blocked by a knight or a bishop or a rook, and it can advance. That's good, but these two little guys, the both pawns in the center, this is really nice. 
this is really nice. I'm going to emphasize that. This is one of the attractions, right, of White wanting to offer the B pawn to Black. Yeah, I'll give you a pawn. That's worth it because watch what I'm going to do with the result. And that's what I want to show you. Notice which pawn to push now. Okay. So you've done your D4. Good job. The bishop is backed off. Now this pawn is the one you move because that's the one that's attacked. See, this pawn is covered. He won't take this pawn because you've got him guarded twice. Yeah? And it actually helps speed up his development and get a very excellent centralized knight because the queen can't respond. Her pawn hasn't moved yet. But your queen can protect that pawn. So this is not the pawn to push. The pawn that's threatened is the one you want to push. And you go, all right, take that. What do you got? What do you got? Show, 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 show. And he goes, no sweat now. Watch what black does. Expect that. Oh, you're going to hit one of my pieces. Well, then I'm going to counter punch. This is boxing 101 for chess players. Counterpunch. So that if he takes, then he takes. So what do you do in this instance? Now, we have options. We always have options. There's always options. You can come ahead to the, the B5 if you want, but then the knight is going to move back. Probably to here, there are... If, if the bishop was already out, if this bishop was on f4, then the h5 maneuver hitting the bishop would be an option, etc. So So this is open to you, but don't do that. Take the knight. Take the knight. You, and you say, yeah, but you know giving up the bishop pair, and yeah, you know, it was the light-squared bishop, which in this particular opening is a really good piece. So you had better have something really good, and that's why the Evans Gambit has been developed, because he does have something really, really good. I want to say hi to Nishant. Good job. Thank you. Glad to have you. Very good. Very good. And so let him take the bishop. We love to try to emphasize what Jeremy Silman was all about in every book that wonderful man ever wrote, reading the chessboard. And, and this takes time. It takes practice. It does occur. It happens. You can do this. I can do hard things. That's why I'm wearing this shirt today. You can do hard things. Well, I don't understand how to read the chessboard. Well, it's not going to happen in one day. You don't learn to read books in one day, but it will happen if you practice and study. And that's why I love doing my videos, because I like to help that out. So, the nice thing about this board is one of the things you are instantly, you'll train yourself to do this. Instantly, when one of the imbalances and features shows up, you at least take notice of it. You say, oh, okay, now, now this feature is here, right? Whenever you see that, you go to that like a child goes to sweets. Yeah. Or like the backyard professor goes to Reese's peanut butter cups. You see that open file and you see a rook across from the king. You betcha, baby. Put the rook right there and go check. Yeah. See, the exchange blocks done. Granted, he got your good bishop. I get that. But he's done. There's nothing else he can take. 
But with the attacking forcing line, white isn't done yet. And this will destroy the king cover in case he ever gets to castle. And that's significant. That's important enough to do. Not only, and, and this is part of chess, man. Not only are we willing to throw a pawn away, and I mean instantly right up front, in order to get this kind of a beautiful open board attack, look how far our pawn has gotten. It's worth our best bishop also. Interesting how that, you know, you kind of have tit for tat, you give and take to and fro. This is why. This is really very interesting. And the king will move to bishop one. And ding, 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 ding. Look at this carefully. This is so cool. You develop yet another piece with tempo. Check again. You're starting to see the idea. Because we gave him the B pawn, we have a spectacular developing move with tempo. That's fun stuff, man. So the king comes to knight one. And again, the advantage is that rook will never see the light of day. We now know in our game, we have the rook pair. He has the rook pair on the board, but he'll never be able to use it. That rook's out of the game. And this rook is undeveloped. And quite frankly, the, the whole queen side is really kind of meager. And you say, yeah, but white doesn't have a lot to crow about. Not just yet. But the principle of the open board, there's not pawn chains here that are locked closing down the board. It's not got a whole bunch of stuff in it that stops your long-range pieces. This thing's pretty open. And there's your evidence. And now look, he's permanently got that. Right? Okay, so let's see what happens. Once again, the cool thing about this is one of the imbalances is we have the center. We do have the center. And you go, yeah, it's just a pawn. No, not just a pawn. We have the center. We have it. It's ours. We have, we have this center. It's ours. So the theme, as Silman so beautifully demonstrates, Silman got it from Nemzovich. He says so. Well, Alakam and all those are Rubenstein, Lasker, Emmanuel Lasker. You got the center, expand it, make it bigger, make it more powerful. How do you do that? You move forward. Yes. Go keep attacking and say, all right, but BYP, the bishop is pinning that weak pawn to the king. This is true. Keep your eye on that kind of stuff. This could be a sniper bishop if black gets into an attack. That's why we want to attack first. Be the aggressor. Hit him right on the chin. Make that guy move. This is wonderful how this happens. And realistically, look at what that little pip squeak's doing. He is decentralizing the knight. The knight can't move there. Isn't that cool how this coordinates? I and mean, it's, it's just a couple of dumb pawns. They're just pawns. They can't do anything, really. Look at how they've dethroned. They have dethroned the knight's station to way over here in limbo. Just a couple of pawns. Yeah, they're winning this game right. Notice how it, the bishop has been backed up. So the direction of black is going this way, the wrong direction, and it's to the side, not the center. Yeah, it's just a couple of pawns, just. This is awesome. Watch, watch. You've developed. Whoa. <laughs> Why not? You get to put your piece more active by far. This bishop is vastly superior to this bishop. 
this bishop is vastly superior to this bishop. And that that's not a bad bishop, but I mean, this guy is just kicking romp right now, and he gets more active, supported here and here with tempo. White gets to do. White gets to activate his pieces and pawns, and black is forced to react. That tells us white has the initiative. That's the theme here. Fantastic. So, I mean, it's not like you're going to lose the queen. You got to move the queen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now, even stronger, you've obliterated the king cover. That pawn gets a gold forehead on his star. I'm just saying, or a gold star on his forehead. I'm dyslexic. I believe in dog. <laughs> Come on, corny dad jokes. That's what I do on my shorts. I can do it on my live sessions. Give me a break. Give me a break. <laughs> so pawn takes pawn, and the king, the king will take the pawn. Okay, so now. Potentially, you've opened a potential opening option for the rook. Yeah. So keep track of this, especially if you're black and you find yourself in this very, very horrifying position. Just keep in mind, all right, yeah, uh, my king cover is clobbered. But now I can get that rook in the game. My advice, whatever this does, is get that rook in the game. Here's your chance. Because the king's not going to stay out there in the open. You know you're going to be forced back behind the pawn. Get that rook out of that stupid corner right now, immediately. Next move. Pronto. Chop, chop. Queen, queen, two. And you go, such a simple move. Yes, such a simple move. Because of this. Just realize he's taking a very powerful diagonal. The bishop is right here, too. Right? And it's covered by, guess who? The rook on the open. I mean, what a beautiful coordination. That's what else we want to notice here. So queen is going to come to knight five. And she's saying, you know, and this is a great move because... It is a way of guarding the king from the front, but it's also making a menacing presence down here. And we do have the bishop, which would be a dynamite spectacular fork or a potential queen covering it. So, the way to attack the king is get your pieces closer. So this is an alarm. When you see your opponent begin putting your pieces closer to your king, sit up. Start watching closer. Because that means his chance to attack increases dramatically. Yeah. I mean, look. Here we go. Here we go. So... This is looking pretty interesting. So how do you, do you begin to immediately pull your troops over to here to guard the king because the queen is here? And I ask that a lot because our, and, and it's a good reaction. I mean, it's a typical reaction. We do this in sword play. You know, if you study the martial arts, when you're, you're swinging the sticks and all that jazz, if he's going to attack I've got to defend. Right? So attack, defend. If we can break out of that, that's helpful. Technically speaking, it's not a death ray yet against the white king. So what you can do is come to here. Now, I misdirected you on purpose. When the queen comes up, I pointed out this diagonal. And it's not a mistake that that's a very good diagonal. But the option here is so that he can get to the larger, stronger diagonal that the king and rook are lined up on to deliver a check 
with the idea that his buddy the bishop is sitting here too, there's tactics going on. And it's just a simple one square hop and a simple one square move. You don't have to get elaborate plans and convoluted thinking that will confuse you and say, well, let's see, I've got to come up to here, then I've got to move over to here, then i got to go way over there, and then i got to drop way down here. No, sometimes just one square and then another one square move really expands your dynamism. Far more active here than here, right? So activate the queen. The other advantage it will do is eventually when this pipsqueak gets going, it'll connect your rook. So this move, and now this move, check another forcing move. Notice he did not freak out and say, I have got to get my queen. I've got to move. I've got to bump this up to threaten the queen. And I've got to put my knight over here. And I've got to get my queen over into here to protect him against the queen. He didn't even worry about any of that. In the process, he did not weaken his king side in trying to attack that attacking queen. It's a horror. She's too close. I'm nervous. Okay, keep your eye on her. Yes. Well, a bishop, a bishop, a bishop's coming in too. Yes, keep your eye on the bishop as well. That's true. But if you begin to defend you end up losing the initiative. You're responding to him. But you have a better move. You make him respond to you. And this is the hardest lesson, man. I'm not telling you this because I've mastered this technique. No, I'm still working on this. I'll work on this for the rest of my life. Let's be realistic. Chess is a lifetime delightful process. And believe me, I have not mastered this, but this is a great review of how not to worry about defend if there's nothing really seriously critical. For instance, let me point out, I'm not trying to make this too long for you. This is wonderful to know. Do you really think the queen's going to take that pawn and go check? Why would you fear that? Just take the queen. See what I mean? I mean, look, the king is a powerful piece. He really is protecting those three pawns. So, yes, the queen is close. So what? Not to totally dismiss it, but quit being afraid. Here, Silman, how did he put it? Quit being afraid of ghosts. I think that's how he put it. I think it's in the Reassession Chess 4th Edition. I got my copy right over there close at hand. So, yeah, the queen is closer, but there's no real attack. It's more of a preparatory move. Actually, we can look at this move as a preparatory move, as a way for the queen to help defend her king because the pawns have been shattered. And notice what happens. It was the middle pawn. So this is an isolated pawn. It becomes a target. This is another isolated pawn. It becomes a target. And unfortunately for black, it's where the king castled. So there's a target. And the king is the only piece defending the rook. The rook is also a target. And guess what? White is attacking the target. Because he didn't worry about this. That's important. It, it's good for your psychology. Okay. So King obviously has to go to night one, right? Where's my water? So, I mean, it's not checkmate, King. You're in a position of attack. This is the Evans Gambit. The Evans Gambit is known to be seriously spectacular, right? Kablam, target, and you go, dude, it takes a lot of guts, man. <laughs> Come on. If I'm in a tournament, 
would I go down the exchange that huge? I mean, a look for a queen, that's gutsy. But observe how it changes the dynamics of the position. This is a really great exchange for this reason. Because now check, can you see it? The lack of development of black catches him. Queen knight two. Don't take the queen. I mean, if you're really nervous, I guess you could and be up material. But remember the rook. Checkmate. Back rank checkmate even. With the strongest piece, I'm able to help because she's pinned. And it was the lack of development. Now, how could black notice something else? White was playing dynamically. And Black didn't even have time to get his knight off the rim. This guy didn't hardly play a role. The bishop kind of did, but not really, because White didn't have to destroy his barricade. That king is perfectly strong and capable enough to guard every one of those pawns. You don't see him gone, right? Well, then that means that king, he never took the pawn. Did he? No. So that's technically not an attack. You attack. Use a fantastic tactic of a pin, and guess which squares around the black castle king are the weak ones? The dark squares. Why? Because you were in the attack mode with the pawn, and the pawn took the pawn that guards the black squares. And where did black get checkmated? The black squares. He attacked the weakness with both his queen. His queen did spectacular sacrifice, getting rid of the rook, which opened the way for the pin to the queen. And then the rook comes. I, that's fantastic stuff, man. I love this kind of stuff. I, I can't help it. I absolutely love this kind of stuff. All right. You guys are enjoying yourselves. Let's, uh, let's go do another one. So the theme of energetic chess is really quite important. And I'll call it energetic chess. Uh, just don't, don't play meek and mild. And there are always going to be times, of course, when you do have to respond. There's going to be times where your opponent does get a really good stab at you. And all of a sudden your rook is uh, in a necessary danger and you really do need your rook in the game. And so you must respond by moving your rook out of danger or your queen. Or you, that always happens. I mean, there is always going to be back and forth in chess just don't get yourself in the mindset of responding. Then your opponent makes a move and says, ooh, that was good too. I have to defend on that. And then all of a sudden he pushes his pawn and you go, oh, my, that was good. I have to defend that pawn. Don't get into that mindset or you become passive. When the And it's easier to say than do without question. When your opponent begins his attack, Hack on you, you try to figure out a way to counter attack on him. And it's hard sometimes because when he attacks a bishop and you say, uh, I want the bishop pair though. I mean, the board is open. BYP has been screaming at us for years, learn how to read the chessboard. I've done that. The chessboard is open. My bishop's out here covering an excellent diagonal, and that's being attacked. I, I have to defend him, don't I? I have to move him back, don't I? If you can find a move, pawn, knight, bishop, doesn't matter what piece, or pawn, if you can find a move to counterattack, say, one of his knights. 
or better yet, a higher value piece, a rock, a coin, whatever. If you can counter thrust, and the way Silman puts it, he was pretty energetic, you know. He had some really good, he said, just spit on your opponent's challenge. You don't have to take that. It's rubbish. And go and attack anyway, that counterattack. And expect the same from your opponents, the higher rated uh, when you begin to attack, don't be shocked if all of a sudden he comes up with a rook coming down the open file and attacking your own queen or your bishop or whatever. Don't sit back and go, oh, my gosh, I didn't see that. No, because your opponent will counterattack. Too. So anyway, now I'm lecturing. I don't mean to. Well, yeah, I guess I do. Hey, Gary Tatum, good to see you. Oh, thank you. Fantastic. I think you're higher rated than I am. So it's all good. But don't go by the ratings. Go by your knowledge and general context. And con but congratulations. Excellent. And I'm very happy that uh, my videos are working for you. That's wonderful. I like hearing that a lot. Hopefully, my videos will help me as well. So let's do another Evans Gambit. And this one's fairly, this one's quite amazing. The Evans Gambit also works in Black's favor also. Let's take a look. White isn't the only one to get to have all the fun if you make a misstep. Watch it. Watch it. I'm just saying you can get to slap it with the backhand. You can get a knuckle sandwich on your cheek. Bishop, Bishop 4, Bishop, Bishop 4. So this is all Joko Piano, normalcy, and then you offer the pawn. You say, hey, psst, hey, buddy, come in, come in. Free pawn. Free pawn for sale, total discount, 100% off. Come and take this pawn. And the fascinating thing here is we see a new approach. What if the knight would take that pawn? A little bit different territory, a little bit different. The vast majority of cases, the bishop is going to take the pawn. But every now and then, you have someone who has studied the Evans Gambit. You say, yeah, and, and it's good if you know all of... See, the Evans Gambit uh, almost demands that we learn a little bit of theory, right? Uh, ideally, a lot of theory, <laughs> If you don't have time, just recognize there are two options, and taking the knight changes the dynamic of this. And now what white does not, not, not want to do is take this pawn. Yes, I know. You offered him your pawn at a 100% discount for free. That doesn't mean you're going to get away for taking his pawn. It's a central pawn, though, BYP. True. Let's see the effects of what happens. Watch how this changes the dynamic of the position. Are you starting to see it? Remember, your opponent has pieces also. And remember, your opponent can develop just as fast as you can. Right? So now what do you do? You go, oh... Well, I can protect my knight, except for one minor detail. You didn't get the c3 pawn pushed first, and the bishop is perfectly free to take that pawn. So what? If the bishop takes the pawn, the queen will take the bishop. Big deal. What's the problem? The problem is now the knight can take the pawn. And look at that fantastic fork. Check to the king. You got the queen and you got the rook. Black wins the queen. Interesting stuff, isn't it? There's bonuses. And there's downsides if he takes that pawn with the bishop. There are also bonuses 
if he takes it with the pawn. Just remember, and I'm saying this for myself, I always get suckered by knights. I wish I didn't. I have to pay better attention. So this is a great lesson. When the knight, it was here, when the knight makes his second hop forward, and it doesn't matter which square, the second hop forward, he now has tactical abilities in your camp. So realize now that these squares can really do some wicked forks. Either one of them on the third. If your opponent's knight has been developed and it makes a second hop, pick up. Go wash your face, open your eyes, force yourself to open your eyes, because now tactics can show up one right after another. And we saw this. That's why he was willing to sacrifice the bishop. Actually, the bishop was queen bait. Queen suckered and blam. So that's a fun little trap. It's really important to understand. It helps us understand. Um, yeah, I agree. It helps us understand the nature of the strategy and all that jazz. So, okay, let's look at some more because... This kind of develops into some other, uh, it's going to show us, whoops, yeah. Hey, shall we start the game this way? Woohoo! Black pawn, white pawn, here we go. How are you going to play this, dude? Uh, no, let's not. Let's go ahead and set it up correctly. Woohoo! Okay. So that gets tricky with the Evans Gambit, but this spawns other possible uh, lines. And so I want to, okay, so let's look at it this way. Okay, do the typical pawn king four, pawn king four, knight. Whoop. Oh, knight and knight out and bishop c4 and bishop c5. And now the pawn to queen knight four. So we get to this point. Remember, black is not obligated to take that pawn. That's the evidence gambit accepted. But he can refuse to take the pawn by going here. He can simply bump back. So this is called the evidence gambit declined. Is there a danger... Here, well, there's a danger in every gambit. Depends how you play it, duh. That's kind of a dumb question, BYP. Come on, man. But notice the interesting psychology here of proceeding with the pawn. Yeah? What happens now? Well, the knight can go here on an outpost. Remember... Remember, the second hop of your opponent's knight now opens up the potential for interesting tactics. Let's keep that in mind. And once again, the temptation, just like Eve was tempted to eat the apple. Interestingly, in Jewish lore, the fruit of the tree of life was the fig. I bet you didn't know that, did you? Kind of fun, huh? Don't take the pawn. Yes, it's tempting. It is so tempting, but do not do so. It's just a pawn. Ignore it. Get on with your development. You're worrying too much about free stuff in the opening when you have no business doing so. And here could be potentially your dire punishment. Look at this. Nice fork, huh? Black queen develops with tempo, hitting the knight and the pawn. So you say, yeah, but I also can take third hop 
There's your tactic, right? Knights covered by the bishop. You got a free rook. See, third hop, there's your tactic. The second hop of the knight, you got to sit up and say, okay, you got to look at what square that knight could come to. And especially if it's coordinated. And this works so well with this uh, Italian or the Evans, et cetera, because the natural developing square is the bishop. And look at the square that the tactic occurs on, F7, vice versa. If black was doing this attack, it would be happening on F2, your F2. So pay attention to that kind of stuff. Here comes black. Are you gonna? Are you gonna squint? Well, you gotta save your rook, don't you? Whoop! Wrong one. Queen takes king pawn. Remember, the queen can move horizontal, diagonal, vertical. And then back diagonal check. The bishop can cover. And the problem with that is the smothered checkmate. The uh, And notice where the, the knight is, the third hop. One, two, three, in conjunction with the queen. It, as kind of a, a general rule, when you get the queen and the knight together, holy cow, pay attention, especially the closer they get to your king. Uh, and see, this works regardless. White didn't even get castled. Didn't matter. The queen and the knight make a heck of a combination. Doesn't matter if it's against a castle king. Doesn't matter if the king is in the center. It doesn't matter if the king is surrounded by his pieces and pawns in a total fortress that is impregnable. The queen and the knight make a wildly tough combination. So that's a fun little, that's a fun little one where white got his bell dung. Boing! So let's take another look. This is a pretty cool gambit. Um, I like it. I, I, I'm going to be honest with you. I haven't played it as much as I want to because I haven't uh, studied it as much as I should. But I'm going to give it a shot. I'm gonna, Just for kicks and giggles, it's fun. I mean, I played it with family and stuff, but I'd like to get a little bit more sharp on it and uh, see what I can make of it. So let's take another look at another Evans Gambit declined. Typical, typical pawn, king four, pawn, king four. I keep using this old nomenclature because I get it out of this book. I apologize if that bothers you. I'm not trying to offend you or get you mad. Some people get really sensitive about stuff like that. I'm just saying. Bishop, bishop four. And now, of course, the classic, I'll give you the pawn for free and he doesn't fall for it. He says, nope. Not interested to in play that game. I am, however, going to keep that real sweet diagonal, right? Because when the white king is going to castle, I'm going to have my eye on that F2 pawn. So that's not a diagonal that black wants to give up just easily. Yeah, this is just silly. Th this is passive. This is verboten. As the Germans would say, verboten, no, forbidden. Never just go back to your original square like that. It's no. This is way too passive. You give up this wonderful. So what's wrong with just bopping it back? Nothing whatsoever. Just bop it back, right? So now here's an idea. And you always have all of these cool ideas. That's what makes studying the gambits so fun. What happens if you do this? So, and I know, I get it, right? You're not, <laughs> dude, what are you pushing pawns for? As a real serious uh, 
upper echelon rule that you really ought to pay attention to, you really do have to develop early. Get your pieces out, then get your queen off the home base so that you can connect. Get castle first. Pieces, castle, queen out, connect the rooks, and then bring in your heavy pieces. That's gospel. So this, you, I know, we, we all love to play for traps, and there's nothing wrong with that. Just don't base your entire chess rating on only doing traps. Uh, that's going to catch you. It's going to keep you on a lower level in the long run. But traps are so much fun. They are. Let's look at this one. I'm not going to argue with that. They are. They really are. So, all right. So now he's going to respond because, of course, there's no reason to just let him come and attack you. You got to defend yourself, right? Well, I'm going to attack you anyway. Just the other one. The nice thing is he's got an escape. Notice the effort that Black has gone to keep that diagonal. That's not bad. That's not bad. I'm just, I'm just saying. Pay attention here. Pay attention. The pawn will take the pawn with the advance. I mean, White is going blitzoid total out on the queen side, isn't he? Bishop will take the pawn. Now he's got the knight in his sights. And at this point, Black says, oh, for crying out loud. Let's just get on with the party. Here comes his other bishop. Ooh, preventing black from being castled. That's why this developing move is so sweet. Now, so you say, well, that's a lot of pawn pushes, right? I, that's a lot of time and energy spent on the queen side pawn push and the you know, the manipulation of the pieces. All you basically did was bump back the bishop. But it is the dark squared bishop, and he still does have that diagonal. But it allowed white to also gain his fantastic diagonal. And the effect of the white diagonal is stronger than the blacks because he's preventing black from counseling. Let's see if this affects the game. Oh, man, I hope I didn't. Bishop Rook 3. Okay, and so Black is going to be tempted here. Oh, my goodness. Oh, thank you, Gary Tatum. That's very kind of you. Okay. Oh, thank you very much. Much appreciated, my dear friend. Yeah, go grab some lunch. Uh, it's going to be videoed, so don't worry about it. I appreciate that. Nice super chat. Appreciate you. Now, at this point, Black, if you're fed up <laughs> with all of the, hey, you're putting too much pressure on me, man. Knock it off, you know. Um, he gets greedy and takes the pawn. Yeah. You didn't forget that that pawn's undefended, did you? You also didn't forget that as white, you don't have to necessarily worry about defending that pawn, didn't you? But once again, it's, you're, you're not, yeah, Black Hat probably has more control over the center. He certainly has more possession of the center than white, right? Uh, but you really are undeveloped. And I, I'm not kidding you guys and gals. I, sincerely, Development is absolutely a must in the opening. You can't overemphasize that. And to go on another adventure, once again, notice the downside here. It's just one piece. Now, again, it's the second hop. The second hop. So you do know that this pawn is being attacked twice. 
Don't forget the sniper bishop here. Remember, always keep track of that little pipsqueak because he did not give up that diagonal for very good reasons, right? So the second hop, you have to sit up and say, oh, what's he doing? Whoa, wait, hold it. He hasn't. He hasn't bumped his pawn to support his center to open up his bishop, which usually does come out to here or here. It, most of the time it comes to here to put the pin on the knight. What? So what's up? What's up? Hold it. You have to get into that mindset. Why is he not bringing? Why is he not castling? Well, what's up with that? Wait. He moving his knight again. See, You see what I mean? That's always going to be a temptation for black. In some situations, it's great. In others, it's not great. Let's see what happens. Queen up. Nice multiple purpose move. Protects the... And you say, dude, there's no way. I mean, if he... What he does is he prevents the, uh, the fork. Now the fork doesn't work, right? It's silly now for the knight to take that pawn because the rook's not going to sit there. Now, true, it would disrupt the castling ability on the short, but you still have the option of castling long once you develop this knight. So it's not it's not like it would be a disaster for white if he because it is covered. I mean, your queen is not going to take the knight. That's not the point here. He doesn't have to take it with the knight. If he took it with the bishop and put the king in check, then that would disrupt his castling abilities if he wanted to do that. But notice the sparse development, the lack of development of black. That's a one-move attack. Okay, so the king would move out of check. You can't castle. But it's not a disaster because a one piece attack in a combo with another piece and it's just a bishop and a knight and forgive me for saying it that way but if it was a queen and a knight I would be sweating bullets if it was a queen and a bishop I would be sweating bullets but it's not black isn't developed enough to be doing these kind of shenanigans at this point Let's see what happens. Now the knight will take the knight. Isn't it interesting that he ignores the option, the, the very real threat of the bishop taking the pawn and taking away his castling rights? He says, that's okay. I'm going to make my own second hop. Knight comes to queen five. Now you got to pay attention. Two knights together is pretty tough. It really is. You're hitting the queen again. And now they're both together, and they're both side by side, and they're both across the meridian line into your territory. This is a full-fledged attack, but once again, it's much better with the full army because has black forgotten that white also has a sniper bishop? What is going on? Did I do something up here? Bishop Rook three. Knight takes king pawn. He took the king pawn. The queen to king two. The knight takes the bishop pawn. Oh. The knight took the bishop pawn. I'm sorry. Queen king two and the knight did take the bishop pawn. Okay, knight took the king pawn, the knight took the king pawn, the black knight, and then the queen came to. Hold on. I don't mean to goof this up here. I apologize. The knight did take the king pawn. My eye skipped a line. Shame on me. Hey, Furman 2005. 
Yeah, sorry. I did, too. I did. I apologize. Yeah, you caught me. Yes. Yeah, that's what I'm finding right now. After Queen goes to King 2, the knight took the king pawn. After Queen goes to King 2, the knight takes the bishop pawn. I apologize. And now the knight takes the pawn. He ignores the threat to the rook is what he did. And now the knight comes to queen five. Sorry, that knight was back there. And now it comes to queen five. And now the knight takes the queen pawn. Check. Thank you for catching that. Yes, I did that. There we go. Okay, so now it's a discover check, one of the most damaging. of. Oh, thank you. Oh, Rick, very kind of you. Absolutely. My good pleasure. Thank you. I love you and I appreciate your support. So with this powerful discovery check, now we've got the knight takes the queen. <laughs> Look, there's no way. <laughs> there is no way I would be calm here. <laughs> right? You go, ay, ay, ay. What am I going to do now? You're going to checkmate him. Isn't that astonishing? Discovered check again. And you go, wait, the pawn can take the knight. That doesn't work. It's a double check. It's a double check. Those sniper bishops. And this is a good reason why we can say, you know, even Bobby Fisher, I think he was, he said one time, he said, you know, the relationship between the knights and the bishops, they're real close to equal, but the bishop is worth three and a quarter pawns, while the knight is only worth three pawns. When you get these bishops in that kind of a position, it's, it's overwhelmingly powerful. I hope that wasn't too confusing to you. If you want, tell me while I'm resetting up the board. If you want, I will hurry and replay through that one again. I accident my I did accidentally skip a line. I apologize. I'll be happy to play it for you again. It's just a few pieces of, of the game, and I can do so without so much commentary, uh, just so you get the gist of that. If you wanted to see, hey, how do I set that up when I'm playing? Let me know real quick while I'm setting this up. If you want me to replay that, I'll be happy to do that. Won't take but just a couple of minutes because this was a pretty quick game. But talk about nerves of steel for white, yeah? Holy shish kebab, man. Oh, hi, Karanas, Ronnie. And Bill Graper, good to see you too. Yeah, yeah, you're saying yes. Okay, let me play through this last game again without nearly the blather. The commentary. You got the idea. So let's do this one more time because my eye did skip a line. Okay, pawn king four pawn e four. The knight will come out and the knight will come out. You could get a Rui Lopez, but you don't. You get the Gioco Piano, the Italian game. At this point, what makes it the Evans Gambit is you offer the pawn for free and the opponent says no. He keeps this diagonal. He bumps the bishop back. So white chases him down on the queen side. Black says, I'm going to give my bishop an escape. Plus, I'm going to guard this square. And pawn rook five, the bishop will bump back. And now pawn knight five, he keeps coming forward. And rather than move the knight, he takes the pawn. And now the bishop takes the pawn, and that's where matters rest. And Black says, I've had it with this. Let's get going. So he develops. So White brings out the second bishop. Granted, he's from the side, but they're long-term pieces. He brings out the second bishop. And here, Knight takes the king pawn. He gets greedy. He's not developed enough. So queen comes to king two. It's always a good idea, queen across from the king. It doesn't matter how much crap is in between you. That's always a good move. Knight will now take the bishop pawn. 
right? You ignore that. It's okay. It's just a pawn. Now you can take his central pawn. Notice how it sets up the discovery. The queen wasn't checking the king because the pawn was there. Knight taking the pawn sets up the discovery. And now he thinks, aha, I've got you. I'm going to attack the queen, which is scary. Your queen, the white queen. You ignore that. You take knight takes queen pawn check. Phenomenal. Gutsy. Because the knight's going to take the piece that's putting you in check, and you have both knights breathing down your neck, and you simply go double check and checkmate. That's a fantastic option there, man. That's cool. That's the Evans Gambit, you know. That's some of the fun of the Evans Gambit. So there you go. Yeah, that's a good point, yeah. I didn't mean to goof it up, but I do like repeating. So, so hey, let me ask you real quick while I'm setting this up. Let me know in the comments, would you? Am I doing too much? blathering about the position and and uh, some of the Jeremy Silman imbalances. Uh, if I'm overdoing the instruction, let me know. Sometimes I get on a roll and I just never shut up. My dear wife says sometimes, oh, honey, will you shut up? <laughs> so let me know if I'm overdoing it. I don't mean to. I don't want you to lose the actual you know, trap and how to set it up and all, but it's really instructive to make sure you see why they play what they play and how they play what they play. So let me know real quick. I'm going to take a quick drink. We'll go on to the next one. Woohoo! A lot of fun. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Okay, Martin. Uh, okay, Bill. And Bella Glavi. Okay, good. Thank you. Uh, I just want to make this the best I can for you guys, right? I have a lot of fun. I hope you guys do. I, I appreciate you coming on and having fun with me. So this next idea is called the Max Lang attack. Let's check this out. Now, I don't know how well known this is. It's not real well known because I haven't seen it in a lot of the books, but I have seen it. I, I had never heard of it when I first ran. I mean, the name sounds familiar. Well, probably from this book years and years ago when I went through it. But I haven't seen it a lot in games. So, But let's see what the Max Lang. Oh, thank you. All right. Well, I have been criticized in the past for making stupid mistakes like that. So I appreciate the compliment. <laughs> it's all good. Hey, we're here to have fun, laugh a little, and learn a lot, right? So let's get on to this. Let's see what this Max Lang attack is. You never know what you're going to run into, and you can still keep with the same basic chess fundamental principles that Silman and company gives. Okay, okay, here it is. So this is the uh, this is the Joko piano. Rather than match the bishop coming to c5, the Max Lang attack goes ahead and puts the knight out. Okay, so this will be fun. This will be fun. So. We've seen so much with this bishop coming out. And I said in, in one of the first videos that the option is you can do this. So this is called the Max Lang attack. See, if I was half sharp, I would have known this ahead of time. But I know it now. So when your opponent does this, your strategy is white. Your plan, which is really important to have because you don't want to just wander around uh, with the pawns and the, you don't want to say, well, you know, it's a nice sunny day outside. I feel good. I think I'll let this pawn go for a walk. No, you don't want to just do random stuff. That doesn't do your game any good whatsoever. So don't do that. You do. This is so interesting. When he comes to here. Now, personally, see, this is how I think. My conservatism conservative is anyway i'm cautious i would have done this if anything 
simply because I didn't do the the C3. I am so biased for I, I'm not even gonna lie to you, man. I am so biased for this because I've seen the power of what this does next. And it's irrelevant whether there's only a pawn here or if there's a pawn and he had developed the bishop, I wouldn't have cared. This is how I always would have played it. So um because I like to have the I like to have the support. I like to have the backup, you know. I'm I'm a chicken that way, okay? I'll confess it. But in the Max Lang attack, you go ahead and push. So let's see what happens here. This will be fun to explore because I wouldn't have done that. So let's see what happens. Pawn, queen, four. Yeah, well, yeah. Pawn takes the pawn. Oh, well, wait a minute. No, I have done this. I've actually done this in my training games. I'm lying. Now, that looks real familiar. What I've done is retaken with the knight because the queen covers the knight. So the knight won't take. And then after that, whatever he does, the knight I've taken... I have done this. Wow, what a revelation. Holy shish kebab, guys and gals. Oh, how interesting. So after the pawn takes the pawn, the castle. Okay. Okay, so tuck the king away. This is good. And now he brings the bishop. Oh. So maybe that's why, see, now if it was me, I wouldn't have the option of taking the pawn with the knight. That's interesting. Bishop, bishop, four. But again, see that pawn, that king pawn, it's always going to be under attack from that knight. And if by now he hasn't taken it, then go ahead and use it as an attack. Yeah, so bump the pawn to king five. and now. It's interesting. He's got double pawns, right? And we're all taught to fear him. And, oh, they're horrible. They're horrible. But in the center like this, and they're advancing, those little pipsqueaks are tough dudes. They hold a lot of center territory. And look at that pawn hit that bishop. Very cool. Very cool. Well, you go ahead and take the knight. In the Max Lang attack, of course. I mean, you push the pawn. If he's, see, he, rather than, because from this point, you know, let's look at this for a sec. This will be worth it, I promise. So he went, he went to here. He went to here, right? Let's back up a couple steps. Really seriously, there's not a bishop developed out here yet, right? So black the knight really doesn't have a lot of really good squares to go to, right? I mean, you could even do a discovered attack, attack on the knight uh, by moving your knight. You bump your knight up here, covered by the bishop, and you're uncovering an attack on the knight. So really, that's not that good of a square, right? And if you try to go here... Almost the same principle. You might even be able to bump your H-pawn, although I wouldn't. It would be far better just to find a place for your knight, develop your knight somehow. So that's not really that hot of a square either, right? He doesn't have the option to go here. Uh, that's actually, that's okay. No, that just gives it away. See, the bishop would just take the knight there. So, uh, Rather than work, and honestly, you want a castle. You want a castle. That's how this works. So doing that, just no. No. So there's nothing to do with the knight. So you're better off, rather than losing time by keeping the knight, just make it an exchange. And so that's a great move. You're black. That's not bad. So, as white, you push the pawn, go ahead and take the knight. Now, see, your black pawn structure does not have to be ruined. You do not have to re-exchange with that. You got the queen. Use the queen, maybe, right? So, the pawn takes the knight, the pawn takes the bishop. Now, the thing you want to keep your eye on, too, in this situation, you, your eye, 
you need to train yourself to automatically begin to see, uh-oh, that's a pretty good pawn center. And yeah, it shifted to the side a little bit, but I'm, I'm telling you, double pawns like that in your own territory, backed by the pieces, uh, you'll want to keep an eye on that. Recognize also the bishop does have that diagonal. The bishop is open, ready to, uh, ready to come out. So this you want to set up and take notice. Yeah, you're keeping track of it, but it's guarded. So this could be very dangerous. And the other thing you want to see once again, over and over and again, I never tire pointing this out, is rook e1. You've got the open file check. Always, 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 if you can, open file. Yes, sir, Bob. In this instance, black's going to want a castle. So it's very cool that he gets to develop a piece with tempo, right? So in a way, this move helped Black develop another piece. Look, it's a necessary evil. Sometimes that's how it happens. You still have the, the file, so it's okay. It's okay. Don't let that dissuade you. So... And again, you're not developing very fast. I get that. That makes me nervous, me personally. Uh, but this is really good. <laughs> All right. So look, let me see if I can justify this. <laughs> because I really do make a huge deal on purpose, really seriously, about development. That is absolute. You must do that. I mean, that's how it is. If you're Christian, you must pray daily. That's not an option. Okay. You must develop. And yet, here we see it. But notice the second hop. Knight, second hop tactics. Well, you've got the piece pinned. Yeah. So what do you do to a pinned piece? You attack it. So that's why. In order to try to relieve the pressure, Black makes the mistake of taking the pawn with the queen. Now, this, I'm not kidding, man. This is so natural, right? You don't want to mess up your pawns because, doggone it, I want a castle, right? So... You take it with the queen, and here you have a wonderful thing that happens. You go ahead and take the pinned piece. The pawn will take your knight. You now get to free up your queen with tempo going check. Very nice. Don't... And this is something I have to, you know, keep reminding myself, too. I'm not trying to lecture to you like you don't do it, but I do all the time. Oh, no. Uh -uh. This diagonal is really cool to just keep in mind. <laughs> it's, it's why it's always good to open, open with those two central pawns. Not only do you hit the center, but you open up for both your bishops and your queen but don't forget the diagonal movement also, BYP. I'm saying this for my sake, because that can be a great help, and it is. Come on, tell me you see this. No! Do not take the queen. The bishop was unguarded. You got a piece. See, the king is so loose, he's still in the center, that the position is just difficult for white because you have the open file. You got the queen in a real good spot right now. He's playing down a piece. Now you've got the bishops to come out 
very easy and quick. You can get a super duper quick development hitting those two pawns. Those two pawns aren't going to be a significant factor. What looked scary at first ended up being fluff. Insignificant. Don't worry about it because you kept the pressure against him. You didn't say, uh, you know, this situation looks scary. I'm going to have to address this. I have to address this. No, you did not because it never went forward anyway because you ignored it and you kept the pressure. That's a pretty important theme in all these traps, right? So there's the Max Lang attack. Now, if I remember correctly, you guys and gals, yes, we have another Max Lang attack. Do you want to see another one? That's kind of fun. It's fun to see the different, uh, the different variety of how the Joko can be played without that second knight or without the uh, the bishop coming out. He plays it with that second knight instead. That's kind of cool. So let's do another one real quick if you guys have the time. Uh, all right. Bishop go home. Bishop go home. Knight back in the stable. Pawns line up, ready to march. Let's do this some more. Hold on. I got to get me a quick swig. I'm... I'm talking 200 miles an hour per, you know. Yeah, there, there's a different way to do that. That's true. No, it's okay, Ian Thomas Brennan. Thank you. Welcome. Thanks for coming up. Thanks for thanks for do, uh, showing up. Okay, yeah, let's do another Max Lang attack. This is really kind of cool to uh, see the see the variety so we've got the standard standard with the italian up to this point and rather than return with the bishop to c5 black chooses to bop the knight out almost like i mean it's almost like a uh, a two knights defense isn't it And you immediately hit the center on queen four. And, of course, ex expect this. I mean, if you're going to attack the center pawn, the pawn's going to take you. Okay, so get over it. <laughs> I'm, I'm talking to myself here, you know. I even hate it when I lose center pawns. I break out in a cold sweat and shake like crazy. Probably not that bad, but you get it. So now, see, this is a delayed He'll he'll bring the knight out and take the pawn, and then he brings the bishop out. The bishop will come out, just not as soon. So so now that the bishop's out, again, this is our signal, right? As white, when the uh, when the bishop comes out, we know our king pawn is under pressure from the knight. So go ahead and use it as the attack piece and hit the knight. And. Again, just like I said, there's no place for the knight to go, so black is going to counterattack to your bishop. And it's okay to, rather than worry about saving your bishop, it's okay to take the knight. And it's okay for him to take your uh, bishop because you have the open file with the rook. And you always want to hit the open file check. And of course, he's not going to move his king. He wants to castle. He's ready to castle. So this gives you help him somewhat as the white player. You help him develop. And, and that's okay. We can live with that because we have the attack. Again, the bishop is pinned. What do you do with the pinned piece? You attack it, right? So that's the uh, that's the uh, night night pipe. Now this is new. This did not happen in the previous game. So a bold centralization of the queen. And actually, black has developed all of his pieces. And so the next thing now he's kind of taken it out of sequence. There's no real 
ironclad sequence you have to develop in the center, right? The rule is first your pieces, castle, then bump your queen up. So and castling connects the rooks. But here we see him bringing his queen out before he's castled. Now, that actually, we got to think about this because, I mean, that's a great centralizing move. But uh, are you leaving your king in the center? Is there a tactic to prevent you from castling? That's what you always need to watch. You're going, wow. How interesting. That pawn is pinned. When you look at the pieces carefully and you see subtleties like that, you can actually get a jump on the opponent who has not castled in order to possibly make sure he can't castle. That's a great move. Well, so she chooses to stay out in the field being a very powerful presence, make no mistake about it, the queen is a very powerful presence in all directions, right? So interesting. You want to keep your eye on her. Uh, here we go. You have the open file. Putting pieces surrounding the queen while advancing them toward the king, I can't help but think that's useful. Let's see. Don't do that. That's what happened here, but don't do that. I just, I, I, once you, once you bring a piece, uh, yeah, your bishops. Well, yeah. Yeah, it doesn't matter. There's no good squares to retreat to. And when I say there's no good squares to retreat to, I mean that one also. Vastly better to bump back here. So if you ever find yourself in this situation, your, your opponent's playing white, and you're going ahead and saying, yeah, well, I, I understand a little bit more about the Max Lang attack. Yeah, I, as black, I would be comfortable playing this. Don't put your bishop back home. Keep it out. So this is, this is a grave error. And here's why. Because now you've got the attack. Now, this is somewhat tricky. This is one of those moves, you know, where you say, I don't know if I'd have seen this or not. <laughs> I don't know if I'm adept enough yet to get this. Because that's quite a move. I mean, come on. Knight takes the bishop pawn. How on earth would I have seen that? What does that do? What does that do? Remember, you got both knights. I take it back. You got both knights together. You sacrifice a piece in order you go check to the king, and now he can't castle. He couldn't castle any of that. See what a dingling move that bishop. No, don't ever put the bishop back on the home. That just, at least in this instance, that just does not work. So now the king, now, so you artificially castled, right? But that's not going to help. You're attacking with tempo, and you're saying, okay, but, and I know the queen and the bishop and the knight are actually fairly close, and you are wrecking the cover of your king, but you're doing it with tempo. So, I mean, you know, in a way, it's not like the queen's going to take that pawn right now. The king has it all under control. There's no reason to fret and fuss about that. You're good. You're good. But if the queen takes the knight pawn check, that's a fatal error. Because you can exchange the queen. You can exchange the queen. And lightning strikes. Smothered checkmate with a pawn. <laughs> Oh, my. 
I would not want to be the player. I would. Wow. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. All right. You saw it here right on the BYP show. Oh, hey, we've got another one. You know, I mean, it's interesting how Chernev kind of emphasized this uh, Max Lang attack. Maybe it's more popular than I've thought, and I just haven't uh, pursued the chess literature on it. I don't know. I might have to look this up and see if there's a lot of games to study it out. That's really kind of cool. Kind of an interesting strategy to to be aware of. That might be worth studying, you know what I mean? So uh, I might check that out. I'll get back with you when I do and let you know what I discover if I decide to do that. But that could that could be profitable. Any kind of study of chess is profitable as far as I'm concerned because you, you just – every game so like every game is, uh, is a lesson. Every game, doesn't matter. Okay. We have another Max Lang attack. Let's see what happens on this one. You guys are hanging in with me. Thank you. Pawn King 4, Pawn King 4. Knight, King, Bishop, 3, Knight, Queen. Bishop, Bishop. I know. I'm using the old nomenclature because the book does. I get it. I get it. Okay. Knight F6. So... The Max Lang attack is pawn queen four and the pawn will take. We are used to this by now. This is the third time we've seen this variation. Pawn takes. As pawn takes, we will castle, tuck the king away, and now here comes the bishop. So, okay, bishop's out. Bishop's out. What was that our signal of? To push that king pawn because it is attacked by the knight. So push it. Push the pawn and say, good morning, Knight Nom. And he will push the pawn. No good place to put the knight, so re-attack the bishop. Don't worry about saving your bishop. Go ahead and proceed by taking the knight. He will proceed by taking your bishop. It's all good at this point because, once again, your, eye, your mind should automatically just jump. To where you're sitting there making your moves and all of a sudden you go, oh, because there's a great feature on this chessboard. Train yourself to see those open files and use, especially when the king is on the other end. So there's our cue. That definitely gives advantage to white. So the last couple of times we saw where he blocked the check with the bishop. What happens now when he moves the king instead? Oh, so remember last time, well, last couple of times I was saying, you know, they just don't have a lot of business attacking so early without developing. Look at this. Here comes the bishop. Okay, now that I personally like seeing a more development. And interestingly, the pawn will take. Try to chase the bishop away, but what do you see? When you move the pawns in front of the king, or, or even in front of the side, see, he, he can't castle now. But even though, when you move those pawns, you create weaknesses. He took the pawn. Now, the dark squares are weak, meaning there's not a pond that can protect them. And the weak squares are beautiful spots to put your own pieces, so do it. So, yeah, check. And see, nothing can chase the bishop away. The only way that he's ever going to get rid of that bishop is to exchange him with a piece. So that's the value of the weak square. So, heck, yeah. So now the king comes. So the king can't escape. Once again, the power of the open fight. So he is forced that side, and he is caged. He cannot move. All you have to do is put the king in check, and the game's over. 
Notice again the feature, that rook will never play. The bishop blocks the pawn from opening. The king is stuck. He is a rook down. Understand the seriousness of that. This is really interesting. Now, once again, this looks pretty scary, doesn't it? Yes, I mean, come on. You got to at least notice it because seriously now, if you don't address that, you have two connected advanced pawns backed by pieces. I mean, that's that is that is a tax setup, but you got one advantage. The pawn is pinned to the queen. So you're safe. You can still develop, which is what you want to do. Get your army in the fight, right? So this is kind of cool. So bishop, king, knight, five. And understand black's going to also. Good. This will be a tough fight. So keep going. One more step. Now, this is the second hop. One more step closer to the king. The king is loose. Uh, he's in trouble, right? All you got to do is check him. So why not, what better piece to checkmate him with than either knight? Right? So get them both over here. You see how that thinking goes. And bishop knight three. Now... <laughs> And I just lectured you. <laughs> See, every 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 situation is different, right? You can't possibly memorize it all. So what you want to do is you want to keep the fundamentals, the general principles in mind. So here, that wasn't the right place to put the bishop. Your king is coming under attack. For the love of Genghis Khan, do something about it. Put the bishop where he belongs. Come on. Come on. Get. The defender wants to exchange pieces. The attacker wants to keep pieces. Because you're attacking. It's easier to attack with more pieces. Well, it's easier to defend with less pieces. What in the name of Genghis Khan are you doing ignoring your king? You're not going to attack his king. I got bad news for you. You're late to the party if you think you can get an attack going. You're not paying attention. You are being totally attacked. You must do something useful. He's got an open file, a central open file for Pete's sake. He's got another queen supported file. It has stunted your attack. Right? Sorry to overemphasize that, but this is really important. This shows there are always, because of the position, there are always exceptions to every rule. Now, if you don't put your bishop back on its home square, you're being foolish. And it's obvious why. Right? I hope. Don't leave his bishop there. He's pinning you down. Get for what? You like seeing the inside of the jail cell? I wouldn't. Break out. Absolutely fundamentally. So anyway, that's enough noise on that. But still, wow, what a blunder. Uh-uh. I'm not impressed at all. Here we go. Once again, that real interesting thing, the real interesting thing, I used to ignore stuff like this. That's why I'm emphasizing it with you. I used to think, oh, yeah, it's just a, it's just a one square move. It doesn't do a thing. Don't think that way. Yeah, yeah, it's only a one square move. 
Who cares? It didn't do anything. It didn't attack anything. Right? Wrong. Let's watch. Knight comes to King 4, trying to attempt to counterattack, which is always the proper response. He just didn't do it as effectively as he could have. The main problem piece for Black is that bishop. He should get rid of that thing. Right. Well, the knight takes the knight. Oh, you're going to counterattack me? Let's do it. Bishop takes the queen. Amazing queen sacrifice. And knight queen seven. White now forces checkmate from this point on. How does he do that? Look at the uh, position. If he takes then you've got checkmate. You see the power of that bishop? You also got checkmate with the queen threat. If he doesn't take, if he tries to somehow well, he's got to take. There's nothing else he can do. I suppose you could attack the knight, but who cares? Because you've still got the uh, you still got the uh, check mate. If the queen takes, you've still got the check mate. Right? So. Wonderfully interesting ideas here. I love this. It, it, it's important to realize the exceptions to every, every strategy, every rule, once again, depending on the context of what's going on. You can't ignore that. And so that's why it's fun to practice learning how to uh, read the chessboard. It's fun to... Uh, get a little bit excited about when you when you realize oh hey now i understand why rooks belong on open files that gets fun because then you start doing that and then all of a sudden you're playing along with a buddy of yours and you go is that a free queen i see i moved my knight out of the way to attack his bishop and it was in front of my rook on the open file and his queen was on the other side when I moved my knight to attack his bishop, he moved his bishop, but he didn't see my rook hitting the queen, so I can take the queen. That's when chess gets really fun. When you start seeing, when you're able to start doing stuff like that, that's a lot of fun, man. It's a hoot and a holler. I mean, this stupid crap will keep you up late at night. I so testify. <laughs> right? And pleasantly so in so many cases, right? So, yeah, yeah, good stuff. Fun to do. Interesting to see how various developments either hinder you or help you. I love that part of it, too. So, uh, this now goes to the, we've done the, uh, the Evans Gambit, and that will lead to uh, the Max Lang attack. We saw several examples of that. So what about the, this also comes up, this brings us up to the two knights defense, the idea of the two knights defense, which is another, yet another variety of the, uh, it's another option we can have with the uh, Italian game. Okay, Sunday, let's see, I'm, I'm approaching two hours. Are you guys okay? You want, you want a little more? Uh, I'll be happy to give you a little more if you want. Let me know. I'm going to do one more at least. So, I mean, if, if you can hang around for a few more of these, believe me, I'm game. I love this stuff. This is fun stuff. So let's let's take off punking for punking. Typical, typical. Okay, now here's our Joko piano. 
So instead of doing this, now we're not going to see the Max Lang attack. This is called the two nice defense. But instead of bringing the bishop up, you bring out the knight and the pawn queen four. And the pawn will take the pawn. So all of this is familiar to us. And then you castle. Well, so far it looks like the Max Lang attack. Oh, and no, now, see, here's the difference. He's going to take the pawn pretty quick. In the two knights defense as black, you want to take that pawn pretty quick. Okay. So. Oh, hey, Bill Graper eating steak while watching BYP. No chess. Awesome. Yeah. Okay, good. Martin Kozer, welcome. Yeah, we're okay. Okay. Awesome. I love it. I love it. So he's going to take the pawn. That dirty rat takes the pawn. What do we see? That's our trigger. The knight takes the pawn. So in this instance, don't let the fact that the knight is in the open file across from the king get you to bypass the fact that that's an open file and you are more than happy to make that move, pinning that knight to the king. That's always a correct move. And I cannot overemphasize that. So, of course, now we get the pawn queen four, hit the bishop, and the look at this. Oh, how interesting. Am I reading this right? Yeah, the bishop takes the pawn. Oh, whoa, okay. We're going to see some fireworks. Hey, man, that's not a move I'd have seen. Maybe it will be now, but now this is real interesting because he's sacking a bishop. He's sacking a bishop. So he's going to get, he's going to get, oh, I see what he's doing. Check this out. Clever boy. Oh, and he goes queen bishop five. How interesting. So the knight's going to come to queen two. Look at this. So his knight is now double attacked, although his knight's attacked too. Now that the pin is off, yeah, but now his queen's attacked. Ha! What a conundrum. How oh, interesting. Knight, queen two, and now queen, knight five. Yeah, the queen will bump. Oh, look at this. How interesting. He's he's been putting pressure, he's been putting pressure on the queen enough that he's doing one of these. Hey, how you doing, Bob? Watch this. This is really interesting. Well, where'd it go? Queen takes bishop, knight, bishop three. Knight, queen, two, queen, knight. Uh, let's see. Queen, knight, queen, five. <laughs> Those knights, they're like hornets, aren't they? Constantly stinging the queen. So the queen comes to rook, four. And the pawn to queen, bishop, four. He's going to keep that knight up there and open up the queen. Watch. Bishop, queen, three. He's going to bring the bishop out to queen, three. Now the knight takes the knight, free knight. He catches up on his piece because he did lose his bishop, right? So black's going to castle here? Interesting. He castles, and then the bishop Develops to queen two, hitting the queen again. You notice they're almost trapping the queen. This could be real tricky. That's one reason why. See, you got the bishop here still undeveloped. I know this is the same old idiotic sing-song tap dance I do, but without question, you still got the bishop undeveloped. The rooks aren't in the game, and your queen's out here getting chased around because she's out too early. 
that that is an eternal lesson in chess. Take notice. And I know sometimes you just, you're just biting your nails because you see such a good move. If you could just just sneak your queen out there just for one move because it's so good. It's so oh, just once, just once. Blam, and they got you. That's how, that's how I'm, I'm just saying. Don't do it. Knight will now take the bishop. Pieces are falling everywhere. Pieces are absolutely falling everywhere. And if you can't see this, this is why don't bring your queen out early. Because there you go. He wins the exchange. I'm just saying that that's a really important, really important issue. Knights are deadly. They're challenging. I always get forked by knights. I hate knights when they attack me. <laughs> I love knights when I can do the attacking. <laughs> right? I mean, isn't that all of us, right? Yeah, baby. You betcha, baby. Okay. Good stuff. Good stuff. Let's see what else we can learn from the two knights defense. Ooh, I dropped the queen on her head. I hope she's okay. Sorry, honey. Kiss her better and let's get going here. Okay. Let's see what else with the two nice defense. I think this book has quite a few, uh, quite a few traps, puzzles, whatever you want to call them. Different ways of handling the misadventures of development. Hey, that'd be a good title for the. The video, huh? The the live session. The misadventures of bad development. Gosh, that'd make a great title for a book, wouldn't it? Yeah, shut up, take a swig, and show us the game. All right, here we go. Here we go. Turn the page and oh yeah, we've got more two nights of defense. Oh wow. Oh, wow. Holy cow. We've got a lot more two nights defense. How cool is that? Okay, so this is a little bit longer one. Let, let's get going on this one and see what this one has to show us. This is really cool to be able to see so much, uh, so much, so many mistakes so that we don't make them, right? Isn't that the way to look at it? Okay, so this is the two nice defense. They'll bring the bishop out later. And we know we're going to throw the pawn to queen four, and we're perfectly expecting it to be taken, which is really important because we're going to make it so that the queen pawn of black is going to be pinned to the queen, which will help our development. Kind of clever how he does this. But first, before, and, and all of the books say this, uh, Yusupov is huge on this, so is Silman. Uh, Kasparov, you always want a castle before you begin to attack in the center. Well, before you begin to attack. Castle, just, just castle, will you? So here we go. We're going to castle. Woohoo! Gold star, gold star on the forehead. And that is going to give Black the option, of course, taking the king pawn. This happens so often, and we get used to it because we'll get it back. It's all good. He takes the pawn because we get the open file. So that is a very good compensation for losing a pawn. Give us the open file before black castles. Man, I'd take that every time. For real. So this is good. And of course, hit the bishop, hit the bishop, and the bishop will take the pawn. And the queen will take the bishop. So it looks like a bishop sacrifice, but is it? Once again, we get developed. 
hitting the queen with tempo. Pawn can't take it because the queen will take the queen, and the queen is undefended. This is one of the important points of this, and the queen is the only defender of the knight. Ooh, oh, excuse me. So that's an important. Ooh, that's an important point to keep in mind. So the knight hits. Queen, queen, rook, four. And this is a a5. Queen goes to a5 in a lot of various <laughs> openings where the queen comes out early. Rather than putting her back on her home square, she'll just slip over to a5. And there are numerous options of ways to trap the queen. <laughs> oh, excuse me. But rather than worrying about spending all your energy and time and development trying to entrap the queen, use this time to bring your pieces out because it almost automatically put your pieces on their maximum squares and it almost automatically nullifies the queen. Let, let's see if that happens. I've seen that in so many games before. So this is kind of cool. So queen, queen, rook, four. So now, knight takes the pawn is not the right way to do this. The knight will take the knight. And, of course, the queen will take the knight. So here we have both players with their queens on early. Rather than... Okay, so it's pinned, the knight's pinned, and the queen is attacking the knight. So defend the knight. Why not? The best way now, if you're going to go after that knight, you don't need to. But if you wanted to, you would push the F pawn. Right? That's the best way to attack. But it's better to develop. <laughs> I know. Repeating record, BYP, you're boring us than live with the boredom because I am telling you it's better to develop. <laughs> right? All right. Now, that's what I'm asking for. Is that asking too much? <laughs> okay, now the queen says, hey, wait a sec. Uh, with the bishop out and the queen, uh, hang on here. Wait a minute. Are you kidding me? Queen only went to bishop four? Are you kidding me? What am I missing? That's checkmate. What am I missing? Are you kidding me? No, can't be right. Bishop Knight Five. Queen Bishop Four. Are you kidding me? This is good. This is not well done in this book, then. I don't think Chernev did this right. How interesting. I don't believe you missed that. Turnev is usually sharper than that. Well, wait. Queen, queen, eight, check. What do you mean, queen, queen, eight, check? Oh, duh. No, it's not checkmate. King, bishop, two. Oh, what a dork I am. King, bishop, two. All right. I, I was going to say, that's got to be a move, man. Come on. Am I that blind? I must be because I didn't see King Bishop 2. I'll bet you guys are saying that right now. Yo, dude, wake up. King Bishop 2. Yeah, thank you, Furman. <laughs> oh, yeah, King F7. Thank you, Martin. Yeah, you guys are sharp. I love you guys. You're awesome. I have the best chess audience in the world. I am blessed that way. So, okay, so... No more castle. Let's see what happens. Now the knight will take the knight. 
and the pawn will take the knight. I'll bet he's glad he bumped that pawn up to protect that knight, right? Okay, now, now we're seeing is the proper use of the rooks. Puts them on the open files, man. Yes, queen rook, queen one. Bishop, queen three. You better start bringing out your... Sorry, I'm snuffleupagusing on you. I don't mean to be gross. I just had a sneezing fit. I don't have a hanky handy. I apologize. If snot stripping out of my nose, don't look. <coughs> Sorry, that was gross, wasn't it? Hey, I'm the backyard professor. I can get away with saying crap like that. Bishop, queen, three. Okay, uh, queen takes rook. Yeah, yeah. Queen takes the rook, all right. Queen takes the bishop. So, yeah, black goes down the exchange, but the developed bishop is a great piece to acquire. I mean, the rook is too, but it, it hadn't moved. But that bishop was doing a fabulous job. It was very active. It had wonderful open diagonals. So... Black didn't do too bad, even though it's down the exchange. Pretty even trade at that point, based on those factors, is what I would argue. So, pawn king, bishop, four. Here we go. Now, he can take that on passant, and by golly, I would think he would do that. He didn't, though. That's interesting. Oh, he doesn't want to open up the open file. Yeah, yeah. If he took that on Passan. Oh, criminy. Yeah, he would have got him. Queen could have come back over. Yeah, en passant wouldn't have helped him. I don't think. You guys look that over if you want. I, d I don't think the en passant would have helped him. It's not what he did either. Yeah, because with these rooks here, if he en passant, and I, and I get it. Yeah, it's checkmate in one move. I get that. The queen dropping down. But the queen comes over to here. She's guarded and put the queen in the center and checkmate him. I think that would work out. I, I don't have time to calculate it right now, but. Yeah, so what he did is he went queen rook five. And rook takes the pawn, of course. That's a no-brainer, right? Bishop, king, rook, six. And it's got emphasis on that. Here comes the troops, both attacking. Isn't that fascinating to see them both attacking? Queen will take the other rook. Uh-oh, hold on. Queen's out of play here. That might be too much greed. Yeah, bishop, bishop, four, check. Uh-oh, hold on. This ain't looking good. Bishop takes, oh, this is not looking good, man. White blew it. White got too greedy with the rooks. Queen that five. Two moves and it's checkmate. Check. Two moves and it's checkmate. Help me see the checkmate, would you? Where's he going to go that's safe? Can't go on any of these. Can't go on any. Well, he's only got one square. You got the rook here. You got the rook here. How is that two moves a checkmate? Help me see this. I don't see it. I hate to be such a klutz. Queen e8. Oh, of course. Queen e8. No, I mean, 
It says after Queen Knight 5 check that Black checkmates in two moves, but he doesn't show it. H1 or F1? Queen F3. Queen D1. Yeah, Queen takes the rook. Yeah, but then the problem is you've got this. Right? Now White's on the roll. And he's never going to let that go because he's got... The, yeah, I don't see how that's a checkmate. Huh, how fascinating. Anyway, fun game, but I don't know if I agree with this book's assessment. He says black checkmates in two moves. I don't see it because if he comes down here to take the rook... All right, hold on. If he does come down here... Uh, to take the rook. Okay, so he hits check, right? King goes to here. Oh, there you go. There you go. Duh. Check. Yeah. That's still not checkmate in two moves, though, is it? Where's the checkmate in two moves? That's not checkmate. What am I missing? That's so interesting. King H1, Queen F3, checkmate. Oh, King H1, Queen F3. Oh, of course. Duh. I feel like a complete moron sometimes. See, see, this is why I need to keep working on my tactics and checkmating patterns. Boy. What a clutch. What a clutch, Maroon. Yeah, baby. Ooh, two knights of defense. We still have more two knights of defense. Are you guys up for, let's see, I've been going over two hours, but everybody's sticking with me. Thanks. Yeah, that, that, that's interesting. Woohoo. Uh, you want another one? We can do more. I mean, you know, like Captain America said, hey, I can do this all day. <laughs> Technically, I can't, but it's so much fun. See, this is my advantage of starting an hour earlier on Sunday morning. I can keep going. I'm not, uh, I'm not, I'm still going to achieve what I need to achieve today, which is rest. It's Sunday. Come on. Of course, and you know, the original Jewish Sabbath was Saturday. Uh, I'm just saying. I know, yeah, there's there's scholarship on it that shows. But anyway, the argument still happens. Off and on, they say. All right, let's do another one of these little jewels. Uh, put the knight back in his stable. Put the knight back in his stable. Uh, let's try this again. Ooh, okay. Two knights defense. Let me grab a quick swig. Doing all this talking, you know, I got to wet my whistle. Okay. Let's take a look. It is great fun. It is great fun. So let's, let's do another. Let's do another. Let's see what else we can learn here. That helps so well. Knight, knight, bishop, and now if we understand correctly, the knight comes out. Yes. So you're going to hit it with queen four. And, of course, you know the pawn's going to take. And here's your signal to castle. So this is interesting because in every one of these variations, you guys and gals, uh, we have seen that white always gets the rook on the open file. And that is always part of the basis of white winning if he doesn't blow it in the center. Because black doesn't castle, he takes the pawn instead. 
that cool to see, right? Knight takes pawn, and now he pins the knight. So that's kind of a cool theme. That's been that's been one of the steady theme in every one of these two knights' defense opening. So that's important to learn. And then, of course, he's always going to come up and hit the bishop. And rather than save the bishop, the bishop will take the pawn, and the queen will take the bishop. And it's hard. Yeah, I mean, you got to – I'll say I have to force my own psychology – to be able to accept that I'm giving up a bishop for a pawn. And that's not just any bishop. That's the that's the white squared bishop. Man, that is so interesting. And now the knight to bishop three because the pawn is pinned. That is so interesting how that works. And then the queen to queen rook four kind of puts the queen out of play for a little while long enough that perhaps white can really do some damage. And so bishop, he's going to bring out the bishop here. And now the queen knight comes to queen five. And he's going to castle along this time. So this is interesting. Maybe Black's trying to psych white out. He's watching knight, the knights go that direction. He says, yeah, I'm going to do the old switcheroo. I'm going to do a double back and go this way. We'll see if that helps him. Well, he takes the bishop, and yeah, the bishop's protected. He takes it, and he takes, so we have an exchange. He no longer has the bishop pair. Uh, again, don't forget the power of your rook on the file to get involved in the game. That's really important. Look at how they're bringing out their pieces, though. This is good. It makes the game more exciting, right? And again, bishop knight five hit the rook. Queen rook bishop one, grab the partial open file. Why not? That's the best spot. Queen king two, here we go. The battery. See, that's the cool thing about the queen. The queen can do a battery with the rooks, or the queen can do a battery with the bishops, or you can, if you can get it switched, the rook can back up the queen to be a battery, or the bishop can back up the queen. Put the queen in front instead of back. Either way, that's good stuff. That's good stuff. So now he makes the mistake. He's trying to counteract or counterattack. I mean, always a good attitude to have, but you got to do it correctly. But it's a great attitude to have. Get that, get that counterattack going. Rook takes nine, and he says, "You're paying no attention at all to White's threats." You're saying, yeah, but he's got it covered with the rook. Really? I don't think so. Check. Man, you got the file. Use it. Fundamentally so. And, of course, he can see immediately it's mate if that bishop gets there. So the rook can't take the rook. That's what Black fell asleep on. So this is a really important tactical thing that's kind of cool to see, isn't it? Um, when you, man, if you can do this, but man, if you see your opponent do this, you really got to start uh, sitting up. You, you got to say, okay, what is he trying to do? Uh, because you, you got to pay attention. So the knight has no choice. That's the way to block the checkmate for the moment. And of course, yeah, you lost a rook because you fell asleep. Oops. So rook comes back. It's covered. Rather than retake the rook and exchange the rooks, hold on. You're on the eighth rank. And see, you've got the one, two, a three, a four, and one, two, a three, a four, three, six, three, six. So the material is even. So, I mean, technically it wouldn't hurt. 
to exchange, but hold on, hold on, because your position is winning. Why give up that uh, just for material? When you look at this, you go, look, there are three pawns on this side and three pawns on this side. But he has the fourth. Now, it's way too far advanced. That's a weakness. There's no question. I get it. There's four pawns on this side versus three. But that's a target. He went too far forward without all of his other cohorts. But there's three and two. So the end game would be fine. So, you know, you could exchange. But I wouldn't because that's a great position. So what does he do? Queen knight four check. Include more pieces and give them a bigger activity space and get closer to the king. Man, that's always good. Check and you get and you get that uh, greater activity for your queen with tempo. So that's cool. King gonna fucking job. He gonna dodge. Now you take the rook. Because your queen is better activated first. So the bishop takes the rook. And the bishop takes the knight. And you win the exchange. You've won a rook. You still have this rook, right? You got to get him in the game, though. I'm just saying. You got to get this guy in the game. But you've got the rook, and he doesn't. So fun stuff. You win a piece on it. Cool to see. Cool to see. Hold on. If I could ever grab this pen. This pen is a lively one. I'll mark this off as been studied. Oh, hey. I got to do this one for you. Yeah, this is a real short one. I got to do this one for you. You'll love this one. This is a great one. Hey, Henning Lundberg, good to see you, my friend. Yes. Yes, Kamal, very good point. Yes, sir. Oh, John, good to see you, man. Very good to see you. Okay, let's set this up. Yeah, I want to show you this one. This is good. This is a this is a quick a quick little ditty that if you're not paying attention can really zap ya. And we do not want to be zapped at all if we can help it. So let's learn how not to get zapped in a chess game where we accidentally do a boo-boo with no evil intentions and you get clobbered. Yeah, baby. Okay, here we go. All right, board set up. Now, check this out. This is really interesting. So we have the, and this is still the two-night defense, right? Knight, king, bishop, and knight, queen, bishop. And the bishop comes out. Whoop. C4, buddy, C4. And the knight comes out, knight, bishop, three. And, oh, so... And again, this is this is trappy. You're you're playing for traps, right? I, I hate, you know, it's good to know, uh, you know, when you teach your nieces, aunts and moms, uncles, dads, etc., when you teach them chess, or your buddies down the street, you're tired of climbing up in the tree fort, and you say, Hey, let's learn some chess instead. It's great to have physical activity, let's have mental activity. But man, this happens so quick. If you're not paying attention, you really have to watch it. Kablam, night, night. Five. Now, this is the fried liver, right? It's the fried liver. The, the weak pawn, and now you're, you're going to immediately go to it. The fried liver. And if the knight takes the pawn, which is utterly silly to do, you're leaving yourself open for a complete disaster. Check. King comes to king two. Knight will take the knight. 
Ooh. And the king will take the bishop. So the king can't castle, but he can get away. Oh, not so quick. Queen, bishop, three. King goes to knight one, and that's the mistake. He had to come out. He had to come out. Going in really sucks you in because here comes, once again, the queen and the knight are a deadly duo, but the queen takes the knight. Doesn't matter. Queen, queen, five, checkmate. Is that Blitzoid crazy or what? <laughs> wow. That's that diagonal. That's all you needed. So um, now I confess I made a short a couple of months ago. Oh, boy. I'm about to sneeze again. Don't know why I'm sneezing so much. Goodness sake. I mean, it's not a hot, dry, dusty day with the wind blowing and dust in the air either. It's cold and snowy. So anyway, yeah, I made a short of that a couple of months ago, but why not throw it in here? You know, it's good repetition, right? So that's a fun one. Okay, you guys, uh, I'm 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 at two and a half hours, man. Woohoo! Long, fun, live. Lots of good traps and puzzles to learn and all that. But, yeah, don't fall for any variations of the fool's mate. I, I absolutely agree. Uh, and I'm sorry, Henning. Hey, all. I'm glad you got here, but I'm just at the tail end of this. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to head out. I started at 9 o'clock. I've been here two and a half hours. So we got a lot of coverage tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning. Don't miss me tonight either. I'm going to show off all of my library. I've had a lot of people asking about that, and I am going to do that. So don't miss that if you can help it. But tomorrow morning, I'm also going to do a live. We'll finish off this two nights. Oh, we've got the Ponziani opening and the Petrov defense. Ooh, it looks like there's a lot of good stuff with the Petrov defense and the Philidor defense. Lots and lots and lots and lots. Oh, my gosh. And lots of the Philidor defense. So, anyway, fun stuff tomorrow morning, Monday morning, President's Day. If you could get here, please do. We're going to have a good time. I will continue. This is the first time ever in my channel that I've done three lives, three days in a row. So I'm really excited. Give you a lot of chess, a lot of fun stuff to study and learn. A good way to get together, make friends in the chat, giggle with me, laugh at me, whatever. It's a lot of fun. So I'm going to head out, you guys. Thank you for all your support, your love, your, your excitement, your knowledge, and your sharing this journey with me, man. I, I, I wouldn't have half the fun if I wasn't making this journey with you. So it's a boatload of fun. Thank you. And there will be boatloads more all over the place. So I will see some of you tonight. Hopefully all of you. I know all of you can't make it, but it'll be fun. It will be a, a video where you get to see my huge library and what kind of crap I have put in my mind through the decades. And it's a lot of fun. So woohoo. Thanks, you guys. I got to run. You guys have a good day. Be safe. I'll catch up to you soon.